Well, thank you very much, and, and thank you for the invitation to come and speak tonight. Uh, when is the next speaker coming in September? September. Uh, after or before September 10th? <laughs> after. After, okay. We'll, we'll, you, can, you can count on that happening then. <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I'm an experimental nuclear physicist. I have long background in post-talk. And as you probably are aware, there's a, a brand new particle accelerator, the latest and greatest in the world to be turned on. It's actually been turned on already, and they're circulating beam, uh, particle proton beams in a counterclockwise direction and in a clockwise direction around the circular tunnel underneath the outskirts of Geneva, Switzerland. And this, this underground tunnel is maybe one to 300 meters below ground. <clears throat> so that, that was built there intentionally to uh, protect people from on the surface from radiation from the beam going around. And this tunnel has been there. CERN is the, is the name of the laboratory center for European research in nuclear and particle physics. Um, and what was done was that the former accelerator had old iron magnets. And you know you can make magnets out of iron and magnetize. What is new about the Large Hadron Collider, and we'll talk about what that means, is that the magnets have been replaced with superconducting magnets, meaning they essentially carry no electric current, but they have very strong magnetic fields. So you're able to bend a heavy particle like a proton and accelerate it to very high energies. And that is, that's the, the, the breakthrough in the technology. So there's, there's literally a 27 kilometer underground tunnel, almost like a subway tunnel, on the outskirts of Geneva, filled with this ring of um, particle accelerator. It's, it's evacuated, the air is pumped out, um, and the magnets are chilled. And as I said, we've just had our first beams, proton beams, we, that's the royal we, because I'm here in New Zealand, uh, circulating starting to go in both directions. We're about one-eighth of the way around in each direction. And each, every, every week, we're going to be moving farther and farther clockwise and counterclockwise. And why that's important is that when you have a colliding accelerator, a collider for the shorthanded terms, um, you get much more energy in your collision. And if you get much more energy, uh, you remember your Albert Einstein, E equals mc squared. So if you get a lot more energy in a head-on collision of two beams of protons, you get a lot more mc squared. You get a lot more mass that's able to be produced. So you get lots more particles flying out. And why is it important to see lots of particles fly out? Because particles interact with each other. They exert forces on each other. And by observing the pattern of the particles that are produced when two protons collide head on, we can deduce something about the forces that must have existed to produce that observed pattern of particles. Okay? Now, that's, that's kind of a, a, a really s a simple way of putting something that is extraordinarily complicated to do in practice because as Particle accelerators have gotten higher and higher in energy, and this one is about, for, for protons, it will be about seven times higher in energy than the current world record holder in, um, just outside of Chicago called Fermi Lab. Um, this one will be about seven times higher. And in order to collect all these particles that get created from the E equals mc squared, where the E comes from the beam energy, the kinetic energy, the energy of motion of the protons colliding with each other, you need absolutely huge particle radiation detectors. And you can think of the, the, the detectors in which, and, and specifically the group for which, in which New Zealand is involved, uh, is called the Compact Muon Solenoid Group, or CMS. All right? So New Zealand is involved in a group called CMS detector. And this particular particle detector is like, well, think of a giant soup can on its side, all right? giant cylinder on its side. And it has layers, like an onion. 
So there are cylinders inside cylinders inside cylinders. And each cylinder is designed to detect a particular type of particle. Aha. So we've divided up the work of detecting all the particles that get created from the proton-proton collisions. We've divided up the labor into these different cylinders. And as the proton beams go around and around and around, which we are confident that they will do, uh, every so often, a magnet will kick a little part of the beam off to the side into the tunnel that contains the cavern, it enters the cavern that holds the giant CMS detector. And this is a detector, this is a giant cylinder which is something like, um, the, 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 the diameter is maybe 15 meters and it's about, uh, the, the length of the can is about 22 to 25 meters and it gets even longer when you add on all the vacuum equipment and secondary equipment. But the most important thing that I remembered when I first looked at this detector was that I was, I was overwhelmed and overpowered. My heart started pounding. I mean, sorry to interrupt that, but my heart started pounding because it was so intimidating. You're standing next to something that weighs approximately 13,000 tons of iron and, and, and electronics and heavy detectors and big iron foot pieces that hold it in place. 13,000 tons held together by something that looks incredibly flimsy, these little, these little feet that, that hold it up. And it's excruciatingly um, uh, terrifying <laughs> the first time you look at it. So what the CMS was um, is this huge collaboration of, oh gee, the numbers change all the time, but there were 38 countries involved for our collaboration almost 3,000 physicists and engineers, 183 different universities or research institutes in those 38 countries. Um, and it's hard, you might think, how do you keep up with all this? Well, sometimes, as my wife will tell you, um, I'll sit up at night and they'll have a meeting in Geneva and I'll sit at home with my, my PC and I'll, zoom, I'll, I'll log into uh, the High Energy Particle Physics Network, which is at Caltech in Pasadena, and we will, little windows will pop up on the screen, and there will be Ferenc sitting in Budapest, and there will be me sitting in Auckland, and there will be Dong He sitting in Seoul, and there will be, there will be, uh, what's his name, in, in Lyon, and there will be people in Geneva, so you've got all this, this entire, and that's just for the Eastern meeting for my group, for my particular subgroup. The Western group meets during the day, and then you get later in the day when we're in bed. And they get Boston, and they get Los Angeles, and Berkeley, and, and Hawaii, and it's just amazing to, to keep in touch like that. Um, and so we have all sorts of interesting physics that we can learn, and, and I understand the question is, some people are worried that, is this even a good idea to turn on and approach such, such uh, um, high energies and, and, and almost inconceivable questions that we're trying to address. Um, are, we, are we perhaps reach, reaching beyond, grasping beyond our, 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 what, we, what we can achieve safely? Um, and I think that I can allay any fears by saying that the existence of the universe right now is a very powerful argument that when that accelerator is switched on on September 10th and the first little low energy beams start to go around just to show proof of principle that it can go around, the September 10th when it's switched on and then later when it goes later in October, November maybe when we ramp it up to about two-thirds of its full, in, full beam energy, nothing dangerous or excruciating is going to happen. Nothing like you read in the newspapers. 